It's another week and it's time for the show that gets up close and candid with your favorite personalities. We ask the questions that you have always wanted to. We give you the viewer the opportunity as well to ask some of your burning questions. And above all, we play some games, we laugh a bit and we call it a wrap here on Hall of Fame right here on City TV. My name is AJ Kwako Sapon and I am your host. And today our guest is going to be spectacular. He is spectacular on his own. He is an award winner artist he's a man that has taken Ghanaian tourism to a different level he personifies Ghana and he is proudly made in Ghana we'll be speaking to a very exciting gentleman a whole lot more is coming up for the next 60 minutes right here on Hall of Fame with AJ Sapon don't go anywhere <laughs> My guest today is someone that makes me proud to be Ghanaian. He goes all out when it comes to Afrocentric, Ghanaian centric, everything centric. You're wondering who I'm talking about? Take a look at this. To my faithful girls, humble, willing, and able girls, dedicated to my stable girls. It's a one way None other than the man of Chiami Kwame. <laughs> come on, come on, with me. <laughs> it's nice to have you. Please take a seat, take a seat, take a seat. Like they say, a nation that will not respect her heroes will not last, sure. you know, will not make new heroes. So I think that it's important that we try our best to protect them through copyright issues, through the, um, the cultural bill, National Communications Authority. Musica is doing well. Musica yeah. has this Aging Musicians Welfare Fund okay. that's, that throws money in it. And I think every six months, you know, however you know, amounts he's been able to raise, he'll share it amongst musicians who are 60 years and, and up, above. you know, and things like that. So, uh, 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 this major, this is a major uh, case study. True, 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 true. <laughs> I have to get a research from you one day. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, so the next one uh, coming in on Facebook, Akosia says, uh, Achama Kwame, what will be your reaction if your children decide later in life to pursue other interests apart from music? You know, if my children decided, or if my children decide to pursue music, that is when I'll be shocked. Okay. But yes, because, yes, I mean, my son has demonstrated from one right. that he's going to be a scientist. My daughter, on the other hand, we, we don't quite know, <laughs> but I know that she'll do something that is related to the arts. Okay. She can paint amazingly, you know. So, but to tell you the truth, I, I don't put any limitations and barriers on where my children can go, how far they can go, what they should do. But apart from arm robbery, they can be <laughs> anything. They can decide to be anything. As long as what they are pursuing is morally upright, I don't care whether they want to box or join the army or whatever it is that they want to do, I'm happy. As long as they are, they are balanced. Wow. Yes. C can you adopt me? That's <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll be going into some more candid conversations with Achiamia Kwame, going in some more deeds and probably asking some questions you have always wanted to. Take a look.
Witness the twisted and tangled story of betrayal, greed, vengeance, and love in the award-winning Brazil Avenue. Carminia, a woman led by greed, gets rid of her husband who is Rita's father and sends Rita away to a filthy landfill. Rita finds love in Batata, but they are soon separated by adoption into different families, far away from each other. Many years later, all paths cross again as Rita, now a renowned chef, seeks to pay back her stepmother for taking away her happiness as a child. It's a story of twists, turns, suspense and thrilling action in Brazil Avenue. Brazil Avenue airs Wednesday to Friday at 10 p.m. and the Omnibus on Saturday at 9 p.m. You're tuning into Hall of Fame with AJ Sapon right here on City TV. We have an amazing person on the couch today. He is a multiple award winning artist. He is an ambassador for tourism. He is the one who is making us all proud to be made in Ghana. He's the one and only Achiame Kwame. And he's here and we're talking on a whole lot of things. He just answered the fan questions. Now we're going more into more candid conversations. Uh, Achame. Yes. So some people would say mixing business with pleasure never comes up with good uh, results. But you, on the other hand, have proven that you can actually do that with your relationship with your manager who happens to be your wife. But the, the, the being a wife is not, that's not pleasure. It's not. No, that's another business. Uh -huh. That's romantic business. <laughs> it's a family business. You know, that's, that's not pleasure. Pleasure is in the evening. Uh, right. But in the mornings, it's, it's a it's a, I remember that when we, our office used to be at um, Awudome mm -hmm. and sometimes we go to the office and we fight uh, then we get home I say what's up baby she said <laughs> ah, in the afternoon we're tearing at the office now you want what I said ah, but haven't you heard of separation of powers wow so that is work and this is wife uh -huh. come on <laughs> but, but I, I don't know why people said there's so many examples I think that one of the major reasons why Europe is developed apart from the AP valves mm -hmm. and the industrial revolution right. is because of family businesses so mm -hmm. when you go to italy the the woman is managing the man is the farmer and his children who are graduates are now taking in building the websites and adding the so you see about 50 generations of you know people who are farmers and they are millionaires yeah. so i think that when the when the family so right now when i'm broke my wife is broke we are all broke <laughs> You know, so she has vested interest and it is important for her to make the right decisions so that we are never broke, yeah. you know, because so I don't think there's so many examples here in Ghana. You can see Yola and his wife, right. um, Okran and his wife, uh, Bula and his wife. There are so many examples of it. I don't know why people think that you can't work with your wife. I, it is silly, actually. You too glamorous. Like it, ma it makes it look glamorous. It makes it look good. It makes it look very attractive. With at least in particular, you two as a power couple. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're a power couple. Yeah. 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 Oh my God! Like, you guys are making it. So. <laughs> no, but, but I remember that when we when we started working, when Annie quit um, corporate Ghana and started working with me, you know, my mother would call me and say, "Eso bani ene juma na I said, "Hey, you had your marriage. Enjoy it. Yeah. Let me deal with this one." Because she didn't come in as a beautiful girl who is picking up my phone calls, you know. Mm -hmm. She came with a master's degree in branding. And where are you going to get a person who has the type of experience that she had from Guinness, Unilever, you know, with law and, and an MBA, who is helping you think? I don't want to say, it's, it's like, I don't want to say thinking for your man, Ashanti man. <laughs> who's helping you think. And you don't even have to pay her when you are it broke. Is you know, <laughs> you know, the exactly. And then people are just say, oh, you are working with your wife. I say, if you don't understand, why, you know, I mean, why is this society so stiff? Why can't I work with my wife? What's wrong? With, why should my wife go and work somewhere for 3,000 cities a month <laughs> when both of us can be making $200,000 Can you imagine? A week, you know. <laughs> so what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, so it doesn't make sense. 
It doesn't make sense. Okay, so now let's bring in your kids. Uh, I saw a video of your son saying some scientific things that, oh my goodness. All I thought is that I don't, I don't think I went to a good school. Because at his age, like, he knows so much. But do you think there's a downside to exposure? There's a, the kids. there's a downside to everything. There's a downside to having this conversation. Sure. Some of the things that I'm saying here will be transcribed by the bloggers. Mm-hmm. They'll put it online. People will come and insult me for telling the <laughs> truth. That's a, down, that's a downside to everything. I think that the most important thing in life is finding a balance. That's why God created us and made us free moral agents. Yes, my children like to have fun with me. And I'm having fun with them because... I love them so much that I cannot neglect them and go and do my business. Sure. And I cannot neglect my business and, and go and take care of it. So whenever I'm with them, I'm doing my business and we're doing it together. Plus, it is really, really important that somebody here in Ghana shows the, the way sure. that you can be an honest, hard-working father who loves his children and can make amazing music and work and make your money. So beyond, beyond the music that I, I put out, I think this is one thing that I'm doing to encourage young girls especially who are afraid to get married. Young girls who are afraid that when they, one day they will get married and be left in their house. To see that it can happen if you take your time, if you choose your best friend. So it is not something that I'm doing only for fun, though I enjoy it. It is a thought leadership activity that I'm doing to show people that this is real. How do you keep them grounded? My children are children. They are not grounded. <laughs> How do you keep children grounded? Children are not grounded. My son like that wants to come back from home and play his ball and do his, do his research. Uh, he, 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 he can only watch TV two hours in a week. Mm-hmm. So every day for four years, he'll come and call me a wicked dad because you never went, let me watch TV. Learn, 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 learn. But for me, it's not about learning. It's, okay. it's about balance once again. It's about finding the balance. For a nine-year-old boy, you want to keep him grounded. No, I don't want to keep my nine-year-old. I want him to enjoy his, his, his childhood. I want him to run around, make a few mistakes, fall down, pick it up from somewhere. No, but what is important is that I teach him the values of my society, which is respect your elders, gauge your speeches, learn, do make mistakes you know these are things that i i have received from my forebearers those are the things that i give him plus a few experiences of mine but it's not in my plan to keep him grounded i want him to express himself he's nine years old true, yes true, true. and my daughter is six years old she doesn't even express him he's just quiet <laughs> shy very an introvert very very uh what's the word very mature things that you scream at my son for you can never get my daughter wakes up in the morning, brushes her teeth, takes a shower, wears it, and sits down waiting to go to school. Yes. You know, so I, on the other hand, I'm saying, get up, move, say something. You know, because I'm trying to find a balance for her. Because it's not also all about IQ. It's also about EQ. It's about soft skills. Yeah. It's about being able to, yo, know, having a gift yeah. of the gap. So, yes, I'm a talkative. I don't want my daughter to be a talk because girls shouldn't talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> but I want her to find a balance, yeah. not keep her grounded. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Now, family businesses. Uh, what are the... Because I've seen a lot of... There's a pajama range, mm, yes, there's hair. Uh, Santi's hair. Like, tell me about the different kind of businesses that both you yourself and your kids are into. I do. Okay, so right now, the, the, the one that's, that's new that people know of is the the santi's hair okay. and it's almost taking over everything because see because i'm really excited like I'm, i i want I, it's nice <laughs> to know that my child if when i get a child I, yeah. we can go and get hair for exactly her. yeah. i'm telling you I, I so today i've been with my wife for morning and i see the number of calls that she's getting i'm thinking that i need to join this hair, but can, I, <laughs> can i invest in it <laughs> can i put some money in it you know even adults can wear it i saw yes. a wedding and then the the bride had you had some of hair. Hair. because it is just regular hair for adults and then based on how my daughter feels whenever we take her to the salon we have decided to change to alter the texture a little bit and yeah. add a few tricks or how to maintain and groom a child's hair and child hair care, you know, to create that um, product. I don't know if we can call it a brand yet. <laughs> to create that product, 
for, for my daughter. And this is how we developed it. So she came from school one day because, because her mom se- sells mm-hmm. hair or her auntie sells hair. Every week she gets a new hairstyle. Okay. So she came from school. People were saying, my hairstyle, why can't we do one for kids? Say, oh, wow. Eureka. <laughs> that moment. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so we started investigating it and see how we can add value. You know, so we started that one. It is really working. The pajamas line is also quite interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, we've not started selling in Ghana, but we are selling in some markets in Europe. Okay. You know, okay. so we are working on getting a place maybe around Jolu or East Legon where we showcase that. Apart from that, we do other things <laughs> that I'm, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> able to tell you about. That. Let's just say that, that these are the things that are, um, we are doing for family. Okay. Well, these are the things. But we are going to do a lot more things. Um, I'm pushing my wife, who is very, a very, very private person. I'm pushing her to have her own line of something, maybe okay. her own line of lingerie for plus Ooh, size. Ooh, now know. that I would work. Exactly, yeah, for I, plus I, size. I model too. Yes, and then whenever <laughs> they, are, they are modeling, I, I'll just be there pretending to be pro- directing yeah, yes, and producing. Yes, just very, 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 look, very interesting. Looking. <laughs> you know, so, so we've, we've spoken about that. I also want her to take on um, helping young ladies, you know, to helping young ladies who are about to, to get married, That's, you know, yes. Yeah. And both Ani and I were working on a book before you say I do. Oh my goodness. Yes. So Translations we're, on thank that. you, thank you, thank you. We're planning to release it before December. I don't know if she has the time. Now that she's selling hair every day, <laughs> <laughs> she, can, she can finish the book. Um, a lot of other things. I want her to get into other. My son, now I don't want to, I don't know if I should bring him into the cultural environment too much and he's trying to look at me you want to tell me something <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I, I, because because of how how scientific his brain is mm. he's ambidextrous both his left and right brains work you know so i don't know i'm just gauging it i'm gauging it to see okay where, where i should put him okay okay all right so we'll go for a quick break when we come back we'll be having some more conversations because I want to know a bit more about him, his new music. There's a new album that's about to be coming out very soon and a whole lot more. Stay with us. This is Hall of Fame right here on City TV. You're still tuned in to Hall of Fame with me, AJ Shaffer, right here on City TV. We're having a fantastic conversation with Ochami Kwame. And now I'm going to move into a question that I, has been, it's occurred to me for quite a while and I've been burning to ask you because these days we're seeing a lot of groups getting back together uh, from Praia to Wuta. And you were a part of a di- an, an absolute dynamite group uh, back in Achame. the 90s, Achame. Achame. Do you think Achame will ever Achame. get back together? I think so. I think that is a big question because the whole day I've been chatting with Kofi. Okay. The whole day. Um, we have an amazing relationship. He's still very interested in music. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if he still likes the stage. Okay. Yes, you know, he, he, he likes to produce. He likes ideas. He's been sending me songs he's producing for other people. So I've been with, you know, Kofi for a long time. Almost 20, hey, almost 30 years. Wow. Yes. And, and we, we keep speaking about releasing songs together we don't talk about bringing back the group but once we've released a song together as a chame that's the, then the group is back mm-hmm. but we have not sat down to really look at the the actual dynamics of managing a group and which direction will it go maybe we can do a few remixes and release a few songs but i don't know if we will come back together as the way prior came back okay. you know i i don't know but we could do a few songs. So new but never, we can do. Yes, first. but never say never. Like, okay. Never say never. Now that we both have, he has three children. I have two children. <laughs> I don't know how we can form a group. True. I don't true. know. But we can do music together and release songs and, and have fun. That yes. sounds good. That we, sounds can, good. we can do it for emotional reasons because, <laughs> because I love him. Of course, he loves me. Oh, true. Yes. But coming into music, new music for that, that, that particular one, uh, Made in Ghana. Yes. A new album. Yes. Really exciting. Yes. Tell me, even though I know you're a tourism ambassador and I'm sure that probably informed your decision to create an album called Made in Ghana. Sparsely. Let's go through the entire album as a while. I know it's like uh, going to fe- feature people from all over. The, the country. country. Give, give me the gist on that. So, in um, I lived in America from 1999 to 2003. Mm-hmm. When I came back, 
I saw Ghana as the most beautiful place on earth. Mm -hmm. I saw beautiful people. I saw earth. I saw sunshine. I saw menelin. I saw love. <laughs> I saw peace. I felt harmony. You know, and I've never felt like that about Ghana. So from that time, to see that I started aligning myself with kente and beads yeah. and, you know, trying to find myself as a Ghanaian. And it's been a long process, this whole refining myself. Because growing up, I thought that I was going to grow, com complete university, find a suit and get a white color <laughs> job. I was thinking that everything that I was, had been trained or was preparing, my mind was preparing me to be a Ghanaian white man mm -hmm. living in Ghana with, you know, Eurocentric ideologies. But it, it's this soul section to find myself, to reconnect with my ancestors, to be able to wear made in Ghana, to be able to say that I am made in Ghana, to be able to see Ghana beyond everything. As Nkrumah wrote about in Conscientism, it's been like um, a 15-year journey for me. Okay. And so last two years, I decided that I've been doing this in lit little bits and pieces. Let me come out and be bold and say that I am made in Ghana. Because I believe that if this is the most important conversation to be had and no one is having it. Because once we, are, we decide that we are going to be made in Ghana, and I mean, which country in the world wears European clothes from Sunday to Thursday and only on Friday wear their own wear. How are you going to develop the, the fashion industry? How are you going to de develop the textile industry? How are you going to develop the economy? No one does that. Which country in the world is interested in importing $1 billion of rice, perfumed rice, every year? How many hospitals can we get for $1 billion if we eat made in Ghana rice? How many farmers will stay in in, in, in the farm on the farmlands and not come to the city to do paupa. How many people will be healthy because we will not be eating rubber from Asia? You know, so this is a conversation. This is like a really tough conversation that I believe that not a politician but an artist should begin to speak the way I'm speaking to change the dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so what we are doing is that we're using music, the sights and the sounds of the 10 regions of Ghana to, so we go to Ho, we take an artist who comes from Ho, like Fel Luna, okay. and then we'll do a song, we'll do a Bobobo song with Afrofusion, and then we talk about tribalism, the relationship between a young Kumase boy and an Ewe girl getting married in appearance fight, and we take a <laughs> philosophy of this, and then we put it in a song, and we do a music video, we put out the tourist sites, and we capture the philosophy of the people, Especially to send a signal to young people that you are doing, you know, we've always had it good from our forefathers, their relationship with the Anansi stories, the folk tales, all of these things are amazing. And we are here and not being able to continue because we lost touch with it by force and also voluntarily. And it is time for us to reconnect. And that is what I am about now. So oh, I've done songs um, sounding like Tamale, you know, tra the indigenous rhythms with Fancy Gadam for Bogatanga. I did with um, Atongo Zimba for Wa. I did it with Wiala mm -hmm. for, yes, I, I did one with um, this guy that played the song, Minim Nazabano. I SM and Kel songs from Western region. I've done a song with Uncle Lebo Taylor. So that we just want to let people know that People behave the way we behave. We speak the way we speak because of a pure connection between us and our ancestors. And it is time for us to stop being afraid and embrace ourselves as Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And I think that the easiest way to do it is through the music. Getting the opportunity to become a Made in Ghana ambassador was a plus. Getting the opportunity to become a tourism and a cultural ambassador was a plus. But Made in Ghana is something, it's a way that I feel. I think that we need to change it from a feeling to a way of life where Legon and tech students will not feel cool until they put these things around their hands. And it's coming, it's here, where people will be so happy that we wear, you know, swagger things yeah. from, from where Ghana, where we are happy. The, I remember the last time I was at the, at the Glitz Fashion Week, and then this lady presenter is talking to me, what are you wearing, da-da-da, da-da-da, and then she, she asked me, Versace or Gucci? Wow. I said, 
are you crazy? 2018 <laughs> in my Ghana here. Ask me about a brand here exactly. and Kofi answer. What are you talking about? Versace and Gucci. I don't have an answer for that. I don't care about Versace and Gucci. I care about Kofi answer. You know, talk to me about something that's relevant, mm -hmm. something that will affect change. You know, so I believe that it is time for us to have this conversation. I, I won't stop until this conversation is heard for at the level of a two year old and also at the presidency. And that's where I find myself. Okay, okay. Would you consider politics at some point in time in your career? Party politics in Ghana. Never say never, but I'm not interested. Mm. Because in Ghana, party politicians, even at the level of uh, MP, delegates will take money from their own friend and party member before they choose to mm -hmm. find a leader. Right. And after the politician has paid his friends and delegates, and then he has become the MP, now he comes to sit on TV and say that, Corruption is bad mm -hmm. when he has joined the queue already. I don't think that in Ghana, it is very easy, it is possible, it is easy for people to vote for people if they have not paid them money, if they've not given them a sack of rice, if, you know, a, a t-shirt, exactly, if they have not influenced them, but except for the policy that they stand for. And because of that, I'm uninterested in party politics but i'll be really interested in in leadership okay. whether it has been handed to me or i have taken it upon myself like I've, i'm doing and i think that you don't need to be voted into power to make a change you need to decide that it's time for us to make the change and that's exactly what i'm doing and so if by the time i'm 50 years i, I have a change of mind or the system will vote for somebody without a certain bribe from that person then I can go into politics. But the way it is now, I don't think I'm interested. But would you throw your support behind a politician or a presidential candidate or a party in perhaps 2020 or any other election year? I've never done that openly before. Mm -hmm. I, but if I know the person, if I know, for example, I know George Anda. Okay. I know him as a person. I worked under him during my time my six, six years as I was brand icon for MTN. Okay. I know how genuine he, said he is. I know how smart he is. I know how intelligent he is. I know how selfless he is. So if he, as my friend, ask me to throw my support behind him, I can confidently say that I have known this man for 10 years and he is like this. But I will not blindly throw my support behind a party so that when they come and if you know whenever you vouch for someone their actions become yeah. your failure or your success, success you yes. know i i think that politics in ghana is still very young and until we get to a point where we are not voting on tribal grounds or we are not voting on um on, on tribal grounds or we are not voting on party grounds we are voting because we are tired and we want a change and we want to move the nation forward until we get to that point i think that the most important thing to do is what i'm doing is to increase the consciousness of the people and help them to understand the concept of self and once they know who they are it will be difficult for you to bribe them with a bag of rice because he knows his value mm -hmm. and once we do this through the music and we don't stop and we galvanize and we get more people we get Chato Wale and Ajita and Yvonne Nelson and Jack Yapia and Stone Boy and Sammy, we get all of them together mm -hmm. and through the music, we change the narrative. I think that Ghana will get to a point where the politics will make sense. I like that. I really like that. I really like that. But let's come into you as a tourism ambassador. The particular article I saw, and I'd like to know if it's true or perhaps was misconstrued by the press, uh, about a proposed budget for tourism ambassadors. And with you, there was a budget put around 600000 for you to compose music and run a project to promote consumption of cocoa and also uh, a social media campaign. What is the status of that? And okay. what was the source of funding for that particular Okay, project? so when we were signed as as tourism ambassadors, mm -hmm. they asked us to go and bring strategies of how we can affect culture yes. and tourism. So that is not a proposed budget. I and my team sat down and decided that if we did A, B, C, D, E, this will be the value that we can get in a year okay. for the nation. So this is not a proposed budget. 
this is the cost of the strategy that I put together and sent to the ministry. So this is not a proposed budget. When we were signed as tourism ambassadors, we did it for free. Right. 100% off. There was an honorarium of 10,000 Ghana cities, which was given to us because we had traveled around. Across, yes. That is the only amount of money that I have, or we, each one of us, received. So we signed on as tourism ambassadors, not for profit. We signed on because Ghana is ours, and we believe that with our social media fans and a loud mouth like this one, there's nothing that we can do. Mm -hmm. So this is not a proposed budget. If I was going to be paid 600000 to promote Coco, I wouldn't be talking to our... <laughs> I'll be in a farm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, yes, it's not mis uh, conscrewed, but it is not proposed budget. Okay. This is cost of the strategy that I went to. I sent to GTA and I sent to the Ministry of Tourism saying that if I get this money, I'll be able to shift tourist attention from drinking coffee when they are in our Ghana to drinking cocoa. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Like that. But hepatitis B. Yes. And congratulations for the key you got to the city. Uh, you know. That's actually really fantastic to know that one of us is actually doing great things and being recognized out of our shores. Tell me about that. How did that particularly come across? Why did you even select <coughs> hepatitis B in the first place? Was it an encounter you had? Yes. Yeah, so um, I remember that I was getting sick on and off and then also when I, it was time for me to get married, eh, my, my wife's father is too known saying, go and do ACE tests, do this, do that, do this. So I, I went to do tests, series of tests. And I realized that the hepatitis B test alone was $40. At that time, I think it was one to one or something. It was $40, which was 40 CDs at that time. Wow. So I said, really? I'm the artist of the year, and I find it difficult to pay 40 CDs. <laughs> How about the woman selling body by the roadside, pay taking the children, three children to high school and university. Are they ever even going to hear of hepatitis? So the doctor that sent me, two doctors, so Dr. Kwesia Pia and Kwam Bwedu, I sat down with them, we formed an NGO called OK Foundation. And we blindly, oh no, me, I blindly, they knew, started screening people and, and doing all sorts of things. And so once I engaged the problem, I found out, more about it i saw that the statistics were alarming i saw that a lot more people died of um cancers related to the liver which is related to hepatitis than even hiv but the beautiful thing about this whole problem is that hepatitis is preventable mm -hmm. so after a while of screening and getting knowledge we decided to also add vaccination so when i added vaccination um the world was odd and i got an interview on bbc Amazing. so based on the interview bbc put on a podcast and the, the World Hepatitis Alliance heard it and saw it because it's in England. And then they contacted us that. And now they went to look at all the work we had done in the past mm. six or seven years. And then they said, that, ah, we are making you the hepativist of the year. So they made me the hepativist of all the people advocating hepatitis wow. in the world. They made me. And then they sent newsletters to the Bill Gates Foundation just in case I come there. The people should hear me. I'm authentic. And that newsletter got on the laps of, um, of the Black American Nurses Association in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So they said, wow, one of us is doing amazing like this in Africa. Let us bring him here to come and, and award him. And that is how I got the keys to the city of Cincinnati. Can you imagine? So yes. it's November what? It's November 19th. 19. 19. So yes. are we going to go? Oh, there? yes, 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 yes. So We're going. I, my passport is in the back. So you, I, I'll have, you have a visa already. I, 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 will, I will find it. Yes, yes, yes. So, so we are going. So every year we do a small art festival to Fantastic. bring yes, African arts to, to fall. Charlie. And then, you know, small, small. You're, you're doing well. You're doing thank well. You, thank, you, doing thank, well. You, thank you, thank really you, thank you, thank you, well. thank you. Now, about Made in Ghana, the album, when is it coming out? The album is coming out. Hmm. Well, like, this is the question. I've already <laughs> communicated the album is coming out in December. Okay. Yes, I wanted it on the 14th. My team wanted it on the 22nd mm -hmm. because um, of reasons, marketing reasons. But then I just realized that if I release the album on the 14th, Ghana Music Awards will close the entry point at 1st January. Oh. So why don't I wait and release the album on 2nd January? 
so that I can have much more time to promote it so that by 2019 I just win the all the awards oh. because I've done an amazing album yeah. but management is still fighting with me on that because they've already communicated that the album is coming out in December and they want to be consistent so this is the time where we make the sacrifice so we are still fighting over it but the album is ready I think the only song that's not ready is the one with Wiala mm. Wiala must do a few things she's back in Ghana on the on the 20 on the 19th of November so 20th she'll finish it and then we are good, to, good go. to go and i played the 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 you want made in ghana featuring kitty yes on brunch in the city which is it's a really amazing song it's it, you really, like it it makes me want to dance like, wow yeah, this one yeah. break out yeah. like, but does it does it does it make you feel it, it, amazing yes. as a ghanian does it have that ghanian it, has, it, it really does it has like the bright elements you know you can hear the beats I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm talking like I'm a music producer, like I'm talking kind of music producer. No, no, but, but, but it's all right. You know, music is not to be diagnosed, it's mm. to be enjoyed. Yes. So once true. you're enjoying it, I'm happy. Okay, and I absolutely am. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the album coming out. Yes, very yes, soon. yes, yes, yes. But let me pick, quickly pick your thoughts before I let you go on this particular segment about the industry. Yes. Uh, that you have seen grow in the last couple of years. And. Being someone who preaches mainly in Ghana, and with a whole debate about Ghanaian music being, or Nigerian music being preferred over Ghanaian music, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think we are hyping foreign music, and by foreign I mean music that are not necessarily Ghanaian, too much? It, we, we can do more, but I have to be objective here. When I started going to the club, which was like 13, <laughs> when I started going to the club, there was nothing like Ghanaian music in the club mm -hmm. because I remember that as young people, young people all over the world follow nothing but the word cool. Mm -hmm. They want cool. And I remember that we used to find high life music to be on cool. It was folk music, you know, folk. Mm -hmm. You know, so whenever you go to a club in the 90s, you only hear hip hop and dance song. Yeah. And then fortunately, hip life came in, um, in 96. And then we started playing only Ghanaian music. And I remember Glenn's, and I will never forget Fifi Pratt, who play only Ghanaian music, High Life and Hip Life Night. And the Glenn's was the biggest nightlife, you know, thing go happening in Ghana. Then it got boring. So Nigerians and Ivorians started mimicking that our style of high life. Mm -hmm. And because it was similar, our people fell in love with it. And now these people have, their, their market's about 10 times the size of our market. And because of that, they make more money. And therefore, they can do a few things a little better than we do it. Mm -hmm. And if the competition became a West African competition. Now, there's a lot, of, a lot more of them who were singing when we were rapping. And it is true. If you look at even the, the type of Nigerian songs that come to Ghana, you don't find the rappers. It's only once in a while an MI or a Mod 9 will pass through. But it's just singers, singers, yeah. singers, singers. You sound very similar because now they're taking the Jollof and Shito and Exactly. And exactly. So the thing that happened was that our rap music from 96 became the staple. Mm -hmm. And then when it started getting boring, people now started wanting to hear singers. And we didn't have that many singers. We just Kwab Na, Kwab Na, and Mr. Kid and a few ones. All of us are rappers. So when they wanted singing, they went to Nigeria because it's a similar. We have similar cultures. But thanks to God, we have Kwame Eugene, Kidi, <laughs> Kim Promise, um, Akwabwa, and all of them are singing much, much better than the P squares and the fake auto tune that they bring in here. So if you tell me the truth, you will see that we love our high life music better sure. because now it is cool, it is young, it is trendy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a, a, a problem of demand and supply mm -hmm. and marketing. But because Nigeria especially shuts us out and then they have their cultural bill that says at prime time you can't play this only 30% of all foreign music or all foreign content and 70% of local, it sort of restricts the gate that we can go through to, to exchange yeah. the favor. You know, because of that, I think that, yes, we must also close the gate. I, but I think that the way we are going about it it's not professional enough. Mm -hmm. But I think that the way we are going about it is not professional enough. Why? Because we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, we are on Instagram and ranting. Mm -hmm. But we are not bringing ourselves together as a group to sit down and have a strategy of step-by-step -step tactics right. of how we can get a politician to make a move on us.
Because don't forget that the politician has issues. He needs to build a hospital in Tumu. There are still people here in Ghana who are going to school under trees. It's the politician's responsibility to make policies that all these things happen. Musicians driving Mercedes and Range Rovers. Yes, I am with you. You know, so we must sit down and create a step-by-step -step strategy. First, writing a letter to them. Secondly, visiting them, um, overwhelming them with the star power, and then asking them to do to pass the cultural bill for us. And if they do not pass the cultural bill, after we've done all these things, then we must come together and march to parliament and bring the cameras and let the world see. So almost is seeing. They are not looking at our direction. And I think that if we do this, local content will be appreciated because just as you know i remember Ghanaians have always loved Ghanaian content i when Ghanaians watch i told you so yeah you see the way they feel about it my father will let you go and bath <laughs> or he will wait if you have not bathed on a sunday before a or a bra and then when announcements when they start showing announcements they say Toriko Jari. <laughs> why your homework you know we have always loved Ghanaian content. I remember things we do for love. Yes. It was much better than yes. any of these soap operas. But without passing the cultural bill, we will only be on social media ranting. Because once the cultural bill is passed, CTTV will have no, no option than to invest in local content, than to invest in talks like this, instead of importing telenovelas mm -hmm. to fill in the space because it is cheaper and it is more competitive than ours because they started 2,000 years ago. Yeah. And we are just getting started. You know, so the cultural bill must be passed. We need to go beyond ranting on social media and having a strategy. And this one, I, I was talking to a boy last night about it, that he must bring the people together and set the tactics of how we can get the cultural bill passed before 2020. And until that... I don't see us going anywhere. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming. You know what? It's time for us to do a bit of a random segment and then play some interesting games. <laughs> That's my evil laughter, by the way. This is so Hall of Fame. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're still tuned in to Hall of Fame with me, AJ Sapon, right here on City TV. My guest today is Ochiame Kwame. So here on the game segment, this particular time, we have a few games we're going to go through. So the first one is, who is this? So we're going to show a picture of a personality. He has to guess who it is. Uh, who said this is voices of personalities, and he has to guess who that particular one is which tv shows theme song is this so we'll play some songs it could be buried uh of a few themes uh, theme song of various shows and he has to guess which particular show that is and finally who sung this and what is the title who we'll plays songs and he has to guess which particular song it is and who sung it that simple right well not really <laughs> so we're gonna go into it so first you're gonna do two out of four because I, I like you so much I, I don't want to stress you too much gets yeah, so uh, <laughs> and the best part if he doesn't get it right he has to eat a slice of lime yeah i told you i was, I was, I was very diabolical at least me and my crew are so <laughs> oh 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 wow oh wow he's proving that Charlie ain't nothing to him eh? don't worry <laughs> Darn it, next time I need to find something harder. But okay, ready? Which one are you gonna go for? <laughs> Thank you very much. So, the first one is <laughs> which movie's theme song is this? Alrighty, so we're gonna see which one goes in. And the extra bit is that we're collating results. And Stoneboy came and he got all of his correct. So at the end of the season, the celebrity that gets the most correct will get an exciting weekend stay. And I'll give you all the gist towards the end of the season. But let's go into the very first one. Hey. <laughs> I feel so diabolical. <clears throat> do you, do you, can you have you figured it out? 
it sounds like a door. No, no, no. I know. I feel, I feel like, I feel like you had extra help from from those behind the camera. It, it, it was people. Should we give it to him? It's better to get it. Is that a yes or a no? Yes. Yes? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Now so we'll give it to him. Okay. So let's see if it gets harder or easier from here. So the next one, uh, which is. Oh, for that. So for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, also for that. Well, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So let's see what the next one is. Journey to the West. At this point. Okay. At this particular point, we are at three. He seems to be getting all of it, but let's go on to the very next one. Uh, <laughs> and. <laughs> this one might be a little other. Ross Rider. Uh, there's a rider in there, but it's not rough. Night Rider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to feel that. <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, okay, 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 okay. The man has been eating one lemon or lime. Depending on what you're looking at. Okay, so we have the final one. The final one. Let's see how that goes. Hmm. This is... Mission Impossible. No, actually. This is TV shows. TV show. But I think we've gone past. And it's Prison Break. Prison Break? Oh, I've never watched it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was Prison Break. So you haven't watched it, but you, you have to take it. You have to take a, 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 a It came out at the time when I was CEO of, wow. uh, of a company. And Imagine. I couldn't didn't, watch it. You didn't get a time, yeah. Spend time I mean. Today. Too much to do, too much to do. I mean, but I like this you, story. Damn it. We should find. Wait, what don't you like? Pepe. Pepe. Oh, okay. So next time we come, expect that, by the way. <laughs> okay. So we will go into the next one. Um, and uh, so please feel free to pick the next one. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome very much. So the next one is who is this? Okay, who is this? So we're gonna place the personality's picture on the screen, and he's supposed to guess which one or who is this particular personality. So starting off with the very first one, uh, yes, who is this lovely lady? This is the EC that got fired. Mm -hmm. That's her name. Charlotte. Should we give half a mark? Okay, we'll give half a mark. I mean, at least you got the first thing for it. Yeah, yeah, Charlotte yeah. say. The <laughs> <laughs> so we got the second one after that. So we'll just give you half mark. Yeah, yes, I, think I, I think yeah. I got it. Her yeah. name is Charlotte, isn't Sh it? Charlotte, yes. Yeah, I think I got it. I think I deserve to get it. Because that's her name. And she was an easy. But we wanted the last two to add. No, but, that's, but I got it. That's the woman, isn't she, Charlotte? Wasn't she an easy? You see, that's why when, when people know book too much, they don't have to argue with you. But go ahead to the I next one. <laughs> <laughs> huh. 
I did not my attach. Okay, okay, okay. That's so my baby right there. Yeah. That's my <laughs> baby. <laughs> so it is my love. That's it. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the next. Huh. <laughs> George Wayne. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> it actually really is. So it is Uncle George. I, I, I know him as Uncle George. Uh, it is George Wayne. Hey, George so. Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no. Hey. no, 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 you know, you know, too. Uh huh. He, Gospel he's... artist from Kumasi. Okay. Uh, Good boy, what's his name? Ah! Okay, let's move on. Who is this person? It is none other than. Ernesto Poku Jr. Ernesto Poku Jr. It was there, it was there. So you have to, you know, do the do. Thank you. God bless you. God is good. Times three. I'm kind of because I'm just a brother. Okay. So move on to the next one. Um, hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, you see, when you talk, uh -huh. I, I can't think. Okay. So I'm going to shut up now. So let's start again. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So this is a nice gentleman. Wait, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Time, time. No, 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 no. I know the guy said she, she has been distracting me. It's my fault, eh? Yes, it's okay. your fault. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, Charlie, I have to get this question right. If I get it, this guy will kill me. Because he's, he's a great friend of mine. Wow. Harry Lord. <laughs> but you see, the 10 seconds may pass. So, yeah. Oh, Charlie. But no, no, no. This is, this is politically wrong. <laughs> so, we're going to, you know, move away from this particular one because, you know, there's a bit of time left. So, why not pick another, you know, and then let's see how good he can do with music or perhaps um, personality sounds she gets. So, let's try. <laughs> Which one is this? <laughs> okay. Who sang this and what is the title? As an artist, I'm sure this should come very easy to you. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go into who sang this and what is the name. So we want not only the title of the song, but the name of the artist as well. So let's start it off uh, with this particular one going into the very first. I didn't hear his voice, but I think it's Nana to Four. Uh huh. Title of the song. And the song. Abeku, Abeku. No, but I, I I should have heard the song. I just heard the beat. How will I know? Abeku, oh Abeku. There are a million beats like that for Mr. Tiger. No, no, that one you can you can you can start hearing the Abeku inside the somewhere. So but let's take a look at it. Uh, is it correct? Nana to Four, Abeku. So you got another to four rice. Yes. But you didn't get a bacon rice. So, so we'll give you half man. Half. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So we'll go. <laughs> but should we eat a lemon or should we eat half a lemon? Jesus Christ. <laughs> you see, the thing, you know, it's not so bad when you eat it the first time. But when you are consistently eating it, you know, they be. <laughs> okay. So half two. I didn't know we can eat half a lemon. But I guess, I guess we can. I guess we can. Moving to the next one. Yeah. That's the jam, yeah. Ah, this one, he did get it right. It is the late, great Darth Vader Jamina, and it is Coco. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one is. Break a leg, love is wicked. Aha, now that he got it wrong. Okay, 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 okay. okay. So it is Brooklyn Lake, but it's wicked. <laughs> All right, and uh, the final. Who 
is this, this artist? Is, this is and the, what's the title? The artist is Daddy Lumba. Uh -huh. But the song uh -huh. is... <laughs> Which one is poison. Poison. The poison. The poison. The poison. The poison. Oh, my mom, 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 Kakadu. <laughs> 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 But I don't know if it's true. It is. It Are is. you sure? Oh, yes, I'm. I'm sure. if you say so. I'll thank you. I'll say <laughs> <laughs> but before I let you go, I'm going to do a few quick round questions with you. So here is the main objective. Is you're supposed to answer as many questions as you can in the next five minutes with the first thing that comes into your head. So I hope you do just as good as you're doing. Uh, what was your first job? Teacher. Huh? Yes. Where? At um, a primary school at um, Kumasi. Wow. Yes. When I finished my, my, after my sixth form, I did my national service at Meduma, teaching in class one. And then I went to teach again in class three. Wow. Yes. Okay. List all the nicknames you've had. I've had Whiskey. I've had, uh, <laughs> uh, I've had Popo Pipi. Mm hmm I've had life for. Papa Pipi, where from that? I know when I, they say when I was a kid, I used to like to dress up. So whenever I, dra I dress up, my mother would be singing Papa Pipi. Papa Pipi. I've had Bosheba, that's mm -hmm. my nickname. Um, I think that's about it. Okay, okay, okay. So, um, would you retire and when? When will I retire? Yes. Would so, you ever retire and when? Yes, I'll retire at 60. Okay. Yes, I'll retire. 60. From music or just maybe or from everything? I, I, I don't know if I can retire from everything, but I will strictly go into 100% social work. Okay. I'll go into development and working for free when I'm 60. Okay. But okay. Where, between now and 60, everything is about paying me. Which historical figure would you like to have a chat with? Kwame Kuma. Hmm, okay. Uh, what have you always wanted as a child but never got? A blue and red bicycle with a, a blue jeans, white sneakers, and a red polo shirt. Wow. Yes. But with a Casio watch and a, build, and a baseball cap. So you had the entire outfit planned? Yes, I never, never had it. Wow. Uh, when, I, when I had the bicycle, I couldn't get the attire. When I had the attire, I couldn't get the bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one thing you can never share with anyone, not even your wife? One thing I can never share with anyone? Mm -hmm. Myself. <laughs> I can never share myself with anyone apart from my wife. If you could be a superhero, what would be your superpower? I would be invisible so that I can go to the bedrooms of presidents <laughs> to find out where they are taking the country. And um, finally, what is, or if you can name one <coughs> unaccomplished sexual fantasy, what will it be? Of mine? Yes. <laughs> uh, unaccomplished yes. sexual fantasy. Or oh, you've done it all? No, 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 I've, I haven't. Okay. It will be. It will be. Hmm. A shag <laughs> at the beach. Uh -huh. Whilst there are people running around. Wow. <laughs> and on that note <laughs> thank you to one of the best guests I've ever had uh, or had the opportunity to have an interview with ever mm -hmm. you've been amazing thank, thank you, you thank so you, much thank for you. coming thank you, you are a rock star <laughs> in Ghana 
in every aspect of it, and we are proudly made in Ghana. Thank you so much, Ochiame Kwame. You are the very best. And that's how we call it a wrap on today's edition of Hall of Fame. Amazing having Ochiame Kwame here with us. We'll be back your way next week with even more amazing content. But before that, we have to say a very big thank you to Swiss Spirit and Sweet Alisa Hotel for being so accommodating. Our Luri for my lovely outfit. And of course, first choice for my hair. You're going to get all the deets on my social media at AJ Sapon. Let's keep the conversation going on with the hashtag Hall of Fame. I'll be back next week with even more amazing, amazing, amazing personalities and even more amazing content. This is Hall of Fame on City TV.